Hello, my name is Carissa Klein. I'm a researcher at the University of Queensland, focused on applied marine conservation planning with a particular interest in integrated land sea planning. In this lecture, I will focus on the impacts land-based activities have on marine ecosystems. And in the next lecture, I will discuss tools and approaches for managing land and sea-based human activities. So as a recap, there are a variety of threats impacting marine ecosystems. Most, most of which are due to human activities occurring on the sea, like overfishing, and on the land, like logging and agriculture. So runoff from the land-based activities generally comes in three forms, nutrients, pesticides, and sediments, and can have different impacts on marine ecosystems. For example, nutrient runoff is typically nitrogen and phosphorus and comes from fertilizers used in agriculture. It has been linked to crown of thorns star starfish outbreaks, which destroy coral reefs. It can cause phytoplankton blooms, toxic to many plants and animals in the ocean, and hypoxia, or the reduction of oxygen. Now, sediment runoff comes from forestry, agriculture, urbanization, and essentially smothers corals and seagrass meadows, which reduces light required for their survival. Further, excessive sedimentation can reduce mangrove growth, bury seedlings, and cause mortality. Pesticide runoff comes from agriculture and forestry plantations and can result in dieback of mangroves as well as coral bleaching. Now runoff not only affects marine habitats and species but can have perverse outcomes for the millions of people that rely upon fisheries as a source of income and livelihood, which is the case in many tropical regions. Further, the problems associated with runoff will increase with climate change in areas predicted to experience more intense and frequent extreme weather events such as heavy rainfall, floods, and tropical cyclones. To give you an example of how land-based runoff is impacting marine ecosystems, Dr. Richard Hamilton from the Nature Conservancy is going to talk about how sediment impacts habitat required for the bumphead parrotfish in the Solomon Islands, a keystone species in coral reef ecosystems and an important fishery species. A lot of fish will recruit into different areas. This bumphead parrotfish only recruits into lagoonal fringing reef and only really healthy high coral cover reef. So in the last two weeks we've done a survey exclusively in the nurseries and we've compared that logged area with this other island which are on now, Barafa, which is the last large unlogged island in the whole of Isabel province. And it's, there's been a lot of pressure, there's been nine timber rights to log this island over the last 20 years. The last one was just defeated this April and we wrote and campaigned against not logging that area based on its importance for the fisheries. But it's, it's, it's black and white. You know, we did, we did 20 surveys or 100 transects in the logged area and we didn't see one uh, juvenile bumphead parrotfish and all the reefs were dead or in a very, very poor state, a lot of siltation. And then we've done the same thing here in the last week and it's just like, it's a completely different world. There's, there's baby bumphead parrotfish everywhere. So I, I would say uh, I probably got it wrong about 10 years ago when I figured the decline in bumphead parrotfish in the western province was all overfishing. It was almost definitely a combination of destruction of the nursery areas from logging, poor land-based practices, and, and also uh, heavy fishing on the adult stocks. I think, I think what it means, and I, I think this is probably the really important take-home message, is that in these areas where you have these incredibly rich marine areas, and they're, they're rich in part, or a very large part, because of these very productive nursery areas for a whole range of, of juvenile fish, they already, they're already under pretty heavy natural sediment loads. If you log those islands, you'll lose your fishery. The, 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 the lagoon systems which support that, the high coral reef systems which support those juveniles, they'll disappear. They'll be the first ones to go. And in 10 or 15 years, you won't have any adult fish on the outer reef either. So it's, it's, it's a strong message. It's a, it's a ridge to reefs approach. It's one we're trying to promote. Whereas, you know, stuff flows downhill. You can't we could, we could do all the management we liked on the outer reef. We could set up MPAs, we could put in a, a closed season when they're spawning, but if logging goes ahead on this island, we'll still lose, we'll still, we'll still lose that resource. It'll be, it'll be gone in 20 years time because there will be no new fish coming, coming back in to change the ones being taken out. So if you're interested in preserving your fisheries and in having healthy fisheries, you have to also look at good sustainable land-based practices. And, Areas like this, and this is probably the richest area for fish anywhere in the Solomon Islands, it's remarkable. 
just don't log it, you know, um, just don't. Or, or you'll, you'll lose your land resources and you'll lose your fish as well. Management and conservation of marine resources is al almost always focused on implementing marine protected areas, which only addresses sea-based threats, such as overfishing. However, marine protected areas may not be able to adequately protect marine ecosystems in places where land-based activities like forestry negatively impact marine ecosystems. Now take this ecosystem, for example, which is featured in Pete Mumby's lectures. It is threatened by overfishing as well as land-based runoff. Typically what is done to protect marine ecosystems is to establish a network of marine protected areas across the region. Although this will minimize the amount of fishing that occurs in these places, the habitats and species may still be negatively impacted from land-based runoff. Thus, unless runoff is also managed, these ecosystems will degrade. This may require implementation of multiple management projects to reduce nutrient, sediment, and pesticide runoff, including managing agriculture, like excluding cattle grazing near rivers, reducing land clearing, especially on steep slopes and highly erodible soil types, and minimizing pesticide use on crops. Land-based human activities are often one of the most significant threats to marine ecosystems, a problem that will be even more pronounced in places experiencing increased economic development and runoff from climate changes. Where both land and sea-based threats exist, conservation and management strategies should explicitly consider each of them. The next lecture in this series will discuss approaches and tools for prioritizing actions that address land and sea-based threats to marine ecosystems.